Good evening. Yep, yep. Good late afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. God bless you. What's up, Melinda? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So good to see you all yet again. As that, you know, y'all remember that, um, do y'all remember that church hymnal? Once again, we come to the house of God. You all remember that, right? To unite in songs of praise. You know, it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. But God bless you. God bless you. Hey, what's going on, Ken? Yeah, man, I haven't seen you, man. What's been going on? How's the church family? God bless you. God bless you. I got to call First Lady. I usually give her a call once a week to check on her. I got to give her a call. I think I missed this week. I think I did. I don't think I spoke to her this week. I think I spoke to her over the last weekend, but I didn't speak to her this week, so I got to give her a call. But I pray that all is well with each and every one of you. And firstly, let me let me just do some a little bit of house cleaning. Let me say this first. First of all, let me say thank you to each and every one of you who have wished me a happy 11th um, church and pastoral anniversary. Thank you so much. Today was such a blessing um, with the church family and we had wonderful worship and just a wonderful time in the Lord and it's amazing. You know, I love the fact that usually at my church, um, when when service is over, people don't want to leave right away. People hang around and they fellowship with each other and, and that's because we're a family. We're a family. You know, not everybody gets to enjoy family and let's be honest, not many of us are, not everybody is born with a full family, but that's the beautiful thing about a church family come together and and just love on each other you know they can come together and just love on each other and just ask you how you're doing maybe nobody at home have asked you how you're doing today you know how, how are things going maybe no one have told you that they missed you you know um, having a church family is a beautiful thing you know because it, it teaches you that you have mothers and you have fathers and you have brothers and sisters you know big brothers little brothers little sisters big sisters you have all those good things right and so having a church family is a wonderful thing and one of the things I want to share with you is the Word of God says that if the very gates of hell comes against the church comes up against the church the, the, the gates of hell shall not prevail in other words it shall not prevail over the church um, the church of God church of God is a powerful kingdom. It's a powerful kingdom. Uh, we live in a world now where so many people are, you know, they're trying to, you know, say, you know, the church is not necessary or, you know, you could do things on your own. You can praise God by yourself. And you know what? You certainly can. You can praise God by yourself, right? But the problem is you miss out the value that is in the church. The church has value, you know. Single church because you know some churches are not doing the right thing. Some churches are really about entertainment. Uh, some churches are about traditions. The Word of God says this, so I'm not slandering any church. You know, some churches are about philosophy and psychology. Why? Because churches are you know managed by people and so if you have someone that is uh, unrighteous or someone who is you know uh, maybe they're distracted by things of this world or they're carnal in their mindset then yeah that church will not be a home you know it'll be more like a prison it'll be more like um you know, uh, solitary confinement or something where you go in there dead and you leave dead. You know, it reminds me of the Ethiopian eunuch, and I've preached about this so many times, where the Ethiopian eunuch that Philip went and baptized. That Ethiopian eunuch, um, if you remember, the Ethiopian eunuch would go to the temple every year. He would go regularly, right? And then Philip asked him, when Philip came to the chariot, because remember, God told uh, Philip, he says, I want you to go down into Gaza. 
And when Philip went down there and he saw the chariot, God told him to go and attach himself to that chariot. And when he went next to the chariot, he heard the guy reading from the book of Isaiah. And then Philip asked him, he says, do you know what you're reading? Right? And the guy said, how can I unless someone shows me? Unless someone shows me, unless someone leads me. And to me, a lot of people have not thought about this, but I looked at this from this particular perspective. Here was this man religiously going to the temple and yet, not even yet knowing the God of the temple. And to me, that is indicative and symbolic of oftentimes what goes on in the world. You have folks that are part of churches, a part of ministries, and they don't even know the word, you know? Um, you know, I know my dear friend, you know, and, and the Reverend Ken, you'll know this, my dear friend, Pastor Daniels, you know, before he passed, Pastor Daniels was always a word man, you know? Him and I would come in the car, and if you look at my timeline, you'll see he, he and I was in the car, and we would be chewing the cud together, you know? We would, you know, I would say a word, and he would respond to that word, and then he would say a word, and i respond to that word, and he would go, he said, smiling, let me tell you something, smiling. He's like, listen, hey, now, 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 I want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. Now, now, watch this here. Watch this here. You know, and and he would he would say a word, and then, you know, I would quit back at him, and I would jump on the word, and then I would pat him on the shoulder, you know, tag team him in, and he would come in. He like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and then he would fit, say a word, and then he would tag team me in. You know, so and I know that his church. I know that the church that God allowed him to pastor, um, that he gave that church the word, right? Not every church gets the word. Do you hear me? I, I want you guys to hear me from your spirit. Not every church gets the word. Some churches, and what do I mean by the word? I'm not talking about a word. I'm talking about the word, right? See, when you talk about a word, a word could be me coming on here telling you you're blessed and highly favored. You're blessed and highly favored. You are amazing. You're wonderful. You're blessed. Everything is going to work in your favor. All things are working for you. I can come here and do all those things. Hey, Bernadette, welcome home. Welcome home, sis. And happy anniversary to you as well. You are part of the family. And I got something for you, uh, Bernadette. Got a gift for you. Um, and so, um, you know, but but I can come as a pastor and I can give you a word, right? A word. Now, I want you guys to hear me carefully. I can give you a word. And that word can be based on, based upon um, a particular subject right? There's a lot of churches and every church in my, in my opinion, every church is getting a word, right? What do I mean by that? They're giving you something that yeah, the word may identify with or the word may confirm, right? But they're not giving you the word and that's key. See, the word is all the little subjects and everything else, right? Which means you can't just only talk about how blessed someone is. And I want you guys to hear me, right? You can't talk about uh, um, why, yeah, Ken, yeah, yeah, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. In fact, one of your church members told him right when when he asked one of your church members one of his his granddaughters he has a he said what do you think about smiling and she says i think he's a younger version of you <laughs> and he used to always tell me that he's like we we the same smiling we're the same smiling we're the same <laughs> right uh <laughs> but it's like um you know, 
you, you got a lot of churches that's getting a word, but they're not getting the word. And what do I mean by that? The word means that you're giving them the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God. I mean, come on. Listen, I want you, and I want you to think about this. I want everybody watching me tonight, I want you to think about this sincerely and think about this objectively. Are you getting the word? What do I mean by that? In every area. Listen, the word of God says, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. He corrects, right? So of all the words you're getting is you're blessed, 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 you're rich, you're rich, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're rich, you're blessed. You're gonna get everything. You're gonna get a house, you're gonna get a car, you're gonna get a vacation, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get that. If that's the only word you're getting, then guess what? You're getting a word. And I'm gonna tell you the results. The results of that, even if you choose to stay there, if you choose to stay at that church, the results of that is that you're going to be strong in that singular word. I want you guys to hear me. You're going to be strong in that singular word, right? And y'all forgive me about all the buzzing that's going on because my phone is not on mute and um, uh, they sent a text to the leadership team and the leadership team is responding. So it's, it's making the phone buzz a lot, right? And so, um, but when you get, you know, let's say, for example, if your church is teaching a lot about prosperity and listen, I do not, I do not disagree with prosperity. In other words, I believe that God wants us to be blessed, right? Doesn't mean we're always, hold on, let me see if I can mute this because this is being disruptive. All right. I think, I think it's better now, right? So, you know. I believe that God wants us to be blessed. I believe that God wants us to be a blessing to other people, right? Be a blessing to other people if we are starving like Marvin, right? So, so therefore, what happens is that if you, let's say, if your church is only talking about financial stuff, if, if every sermon concludes with finance, if every, you know, every time they get up there's something about money 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 right then guess what you might be prosperous you might be prosperous and you might have wealth but i'm gonna tell you the results of what you will have because you only got a word the result is that you will not grow to maturity are you listening you will not grow to maturity because it's almost like if you ate, let's say, you know, when you get hungry, you have to eat. So let's say if your mama gave you a piece of chicken, right? She gave you a piece of chicken and you are, you know, um, you're full, right? Because she gave you a piece of chicken, but she never gives you vegetables. She never gives you um, starches. She never give you all these balanced fruits and all this like that. Then guess what? You're going to, even though you've been full, you're going to have a deficiency somewhere. See, that's why God called the fivefold ministers. The fivefold ministers were designed to bring the body of Christ to maturity. And so people who isolate themselves and stay by themselves they'll never become mature because you can't become mature, right? Isolating yourself. It's impossible because the only people, and even they didn't isolate themselves, but the only people that oftentimes were alone were people who were missionaries or evangelists um, or prophets. And these prophets, missionary and evangelists, they always had a team. In fact, the Old Testament talk about the sons of the prophets, right? The sons of the prophets, because they always had a team. They never was alone because God did not want us to be alone. And so everybody wants to be this rogue. They want to be a, a leader. They want to be in charge. But they only want to be in charge until problems come. 
Then when problems come, then you see their identity. The Bible calls it a hireling. You're only there for the paycheck. Because the word of God says the hireling does not care for the sheep. It's the shepherd that cares for the sheep. Right? And so when you have when you have a church that is giving you the word, that means from Genesis to Revelation, giving you the word, all of the counsel of God. When you need to rebuke, when you need to be rebuked, your pastor rebukes you. When you need to be sat down, your pastor sits you down. When you need to be um, uh, uh, redirected, your pastor redirects you. When you need to be um, uh, uh, quieted, your pastor quiets you, right? You need that in your life because that will grow you to discipline. It'll teach you how to control your tongue. You are not exempt from persecution and problems. It'll teach you that everything you do is not wonderful and everything that comes to your mind doesn't mean that God said it. You need somebody who is more spiritual in your life that will say to you point blank, God never told you that. God never tell you that. Go somewhere and sit down. You need that because it will help you to discern the word of God says, between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Too many pet people are being led by pastors that are immature or leaders that are immature. They're being led by folks with ministries who have no sustenance in their spirit. Do you hear me? They have no strength in their soul. You know, they're just weak. You know, um, you have, when you have, the word of God says, when you have envy, it says you are proving that you are nothing but, it says when you have envy, when you have bickering, when you have arguments, when you have debates, when you have hatred, it proves that you are nothing but mere men. So when you have one pastor hating on another pastor, I don't care how anointed you think you are, you're immature. When you have one ministry dogging out another ministry, you're immature. When you have folks who don't follow the word of God, when God says, if you have ought against your brother, go to your brother first and you go to somebody else, you're immature. When you don't know how to control your flesh, you're in control, Im immature. No matter how anointed, how many visions you have, how many uh, uh, how many tongues you can speak, um, you know how long you've been in ministry, how long you've been preaching. Maybe you have your doctorate. Maybe you have two doctorates. Maybe you are you know you're in seminary. None of that stuff means nothing. Maturity is everything because no tree produces healthy plants until it is mature. And we have a whole lot of talented, gifted, anointed, but immature leadership. And that's why they can't bring nobody's fruit to maturity. You can't bring nobody's fruit to maturity. Yeah, that person, they think about money, 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 money. And then what happens, look, the more you talk about something, the more you gain a craving for it, a desire for it, and eventually a love for it. And remember, the word of God says, the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? So yeah, God wants us, he wants us to, to, to have wealth and he wants us to be blessed and he wants us to have more than enough to share. God wants us to have that. However, he don't want us to love it. He don't want us to love it because if you love it, you're going to find that money is a master. It's a slave master. It's a slave owner. And money will tell you, you better work for me. So you have folks 
You have folks that, you know, they, they are wealthy, but their hearts are tied up in their wealth, which is why when they don't have wealth, they don't have a praise. Immature. Immature. You know? When they don't have things go their way, they're ready to walk out of the church. Immature. When the pastor don't allow you to put your idea into fruition, immaturity. Now you want to leave the church because you're mad. When the pastor, you know, like in my situation, me being a, a an unmarried pastor, if the unmarried pastor says, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm not dating nobody, right? And then you get mad. Oh, God led me away from this church. No, 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 you're just immature. You're an immature person. And, and it's a good thing that person, male or female, had enough common sense to tell you no. Had enough common sense to tell you, go somewhere and sit down. Go somewhere and sit down. You know, because this is key. Maturity is key. Maturity is key. You must be mature. Maturity is key. You will not develop any fruit to maturity unless you are mature. That's what that's the problem with the world today. The world is rushing all the plants, rushing all the plants to, to get the plants to produce, rushing all the chickens to produce more eggs and, and more this and more that. And, and guess what? These things are coming and they have no nutritional value. No nutritional value. Why? Because it's not mature. It's not mature. And that's what's happening with so many of us. You're not mature. You know? Not mature. And so because of that, you know, because you've been receiving a word. Or if you are in a church that is giving you the word, then what happens is that you're not there all the time. And so because you're not there all the time, you don't get all of the word that you need in order to mature you. The word of God is as seed. It has seed. And so when you get all these seeds, right, the seeds of the word, seeds of this, seeds of finance, seeds of patience, seeds of persecution, seeds of, of transformation, seeds of sanctification, seeds of this. When you get all these various seeds, guess what? Now you become a fruitful garden with so much to offer. But we have immature people trying to lead other immature people. And the word of God says, if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. So you have these smart people telling people, oh, this is what you need to do. And this is what I believe God is telling you to do. And they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue what they're supposed to do. And they're trying to show you what to do. Lord have mercy. I got to run in this store. I got, I'm going a, I'm to a come back. Y'all y'all hold up a second, right? I'm going to come back because I'm going I'm to drop some, some heavy stuff on you in a few minutes, right? So if you got some time, give me about 15 minutes. I'm going to come right back. All right? God bless you. I love you guys.